Hello everybody, and welcome for the first time to Wendigoon. Now, I promised that for Halloween I would be doing spooky videos every week up until, and here is the first one in that series. I've got my pumpkin spice candle, I've got the lights off, I'm already scared, so why don't you get scared with me? Tonight, we are talking about Local 58. Local 58 is an ARG, or augmented reality game, by creator Chris Stroud. Now, you may know some of Chris Stroud's earlier works, as he was responsible for Candle Cove, which was later adapted into the TV show Channel Zero. Local 58 takes place on a small broadcast station in Mason County, West Virginia, home of Mothman himself. Also, to top it off, he has said on record that Candle Cove aired on Local 58, so the whole Chris Stroud extended universe is tying itself together. Local 58's uploads each appear to be individual broadcast programs of this small West Virginia TV show. So without further ado, get uncomfortable and let's get into it. The first program we open with is called You Are On The Fastest Available Route. At the opening of each or at least most episodes, we see a program guide for the night. This lets us know what time it is and where we're at as a viewer. Here we see that at 12.05, there is a midnight movie and at 1.55, there is a paid programming. But as it's said, the title begins to be deleted. Now, this is indication to help us, the audience in the first episode, know that we are watching the paid programming time slot. As it goes on, evidence won't be that clear, but just know that paid programming is a good answer for whatever time we're watching. The broadcast seems to start out fine simply the dash cam footage of a man driving through a city. However, it begins to become suspicious when the GPS begins repeating this phrase. You are on the fastest available route. It quickly takes him to an abandoned road, completely devoid of any other people, or pavement for that matter, as he seems to be driving into the woods. Even more bizarre is the phrase that his GPS says next. In 300 feet, turn off your headlights. The driver does this, and even though we do not see what he sees from the noise, it cannot be good. The driver tries to get away, to which the car is destroyed. We see a flame and the broadcast cuts out. So you may be asking yourself, how is this a TV broadcast? What's going on? Why am I watching this YouTube video? And I promise you that from here, all of the above just get worse. So hang on there. The next broadcast we have is called Contingency. We can see from the time slot that it is 3 a.m. as the regular broadcast is ending, to which the screen immediately cuts to a state of emergency warning. This is followed by the national anthem and a message. Now, uh, I want to be clear here. This is my favorite kind of horror. Like what you're about to see, I think is phenomenal and it's something that you just can't find anywhere and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about Local 58 specifically. Uh, just the ideas and concepts that this brings out, uh, I just want to gush about it, is really top tier and it makes me sad that there's not more stuff like this and the reason I want to put eyes on it is because of how good it is. So if you don't get anything else out of this video, Go watch Local 58. It is absolutely worth your time. We see that from the broadcast, America has been defeated by some unspecified force. This is so severe that the broadcast is continuing to tell us to preserve ourselves and our American spirit. While that may not be clear at first, it certainly is made clear shortly thereafter. This goes to the point as giving you specific instructions on how to do it to maintain the victory position and the threat that police will enforce this ruling if you do not carry it out yourself. It continues to broadcast until very harrowingly it says none remain to read it. And right before the broadcast cuts, it says that infants and pets are the smallest patriots. This entire thing, absolutely terrifying but excellent horror. <laughs> it then seems that Local 58 regains control of the broadcast and says that what we just saw is a hoax. However, immediately after this, a stamp appears that seems to contradict the point that was just made. I also want to say this now. A lot of people think that the Cold War aesthetic and idea of these videos point towards it being in the Cold War. And while they're close, they're not right. Uh, for example, we see in the beginning of this broadcast 
American astronauts planting the flag on the moon. And at the end, we see that the message was signed by Lyndon B. Johnson. Both things that would be impossible for a late 50s, early 60s timeline. Also, immediately before the message cuts out, we see the phrase, the 51st state is not a place. And that doesn't mean anything now, but it will later. Also, for my theory to make sense, some things need to be remembered, and one of the most important things to be remembered is the moon. I want you to remember that that broadcast opened with Neil Armstrong standing on the moon. That's going to be important in a minute. After this, our next broadcast is called Weather Service. We see in the timestamps next to it that we have public eye, paid programming, city council minutes, and focus on faith. Again, as mentioned in the first one, paid programming is the most likely candidate for what timestamp we're watching. Weather service, much like contingency, opens with an emergency alert, but this time it is a meteorological one. It specifically says, do not look at the moon, which is immediately such an odd message for a broadcast station to have, especially in the emergency, but it immediately gets worse. While you may be scratching your head trying to figure out what this means, it does a 180 and begins to say the opposite. Over and over, if you can read this, go outside now, all caps. It seems as if the language and tone has changed a lot from the original message. It's also interesting to point out here, it seems that there is a fight going on within the broadcast itself, as if there's one force saying to go look at the moon, and one force telling you to stay away from windows, stay inside, and do not look up. Judging by the color palette of these messages as they're being displayed, it seems that the force that is telling people to not look at the moon immediately has a change of pace or at least a revelation and says this. After saying the phrase, we will look together, the broadcast cuts to this. Now something else I really want to point out here. A lot of people think that that noise that you can hear in the background is the screams of a group of people, but I disagree. For now, I'll just say it is a scream, but it's coming from somewhere else. Up next, we have our shortest broadcast, known as Station ID, which simply says that the station runs on 476 megahertz. That will probably matter in a minute. And we get another message similar to that in Weather Service, where it says, look away, it doesn't matter, there are no other receivers, and safety in numbers. So yeah, pretty standard fare at this point. Immediately after, we get into the bizarre and perhaps most direct horror in the entire Local 58 series, and that is Show for Children. You see on our timeline that we have Show for Children, and then after that, Community Roundtable, Focus on Culture, and the Morning Local News. What I think's interesting from a horror perspective is how Morning Local News seems so far off, but it's so craved as a sense of normalcy, as you're kind of in the pit of all of this horrific stuff happening, that even though it's just two hours away, it seems like an impossible gap to reach. We then watch a cartoon from another one of Chris Straub's characters known as Cadaver in an episode called A Grave Mistake. Now, as soon as the short begins, you may not notice the moon in the background watching our character walk along and smiling at it in a very creepy manner. It's also made immediately clear that this is not a show for kids. This happens again as Cadaver comes across a creature in a second grave, whose appearance I will get into later. After this, the tone dramatically shifts. Cadaver is absolutely terrified, the music drops off, and the moon now holds a look of pure contempt. He then goes into a third grave, which seems to be a tunnel, and as he gets to the end, he finds a fourth grave that he lays himself down in, supposedly to hide. As he waits at the bottom of the grave, this happens. And that's it, that's the end of the cartoon. And what an excellent show for children. Now if it was hard to make out what happened at the end, the moon passed over the grave in the very photorealistic manner and killed Cadaver at the bottom of it. Also, something to note, Cadaver was following the three F's position mentioned in Contingency, 
lying down facing up, but he died when the moon passed over. Also, we know that the moon is an immediate threat, as it was mentioned in Weather Service. So, so far, we've established that A, moon is a problem, and B, don't look at it. From that, other logical conclusions aren't hard to put together. That the threat heard in contingency is the moon itself, which makes sense that it would be such a horrible foe that the United States couldn't possibly beat it. How that gets into you are on the fastest available route, we'll get into a minute, but just for now understand that the moon is the main threat being faced in these stories. Our next broadcast is called A Look Back, and while it starts out as a retrospective look at Local 58 itself, it immediately switches gears into that of weather service and begins offering cryptic messages. Now this message about we send signals to their domain is directly related to what we mentioned in station ID when we heard that it was broadcasted at 476 megahertz. What's so special about that? Well, megahertz are the frequency at which waves get launched into space. And when here it is talking about we send signals through their domain, did we really think they wouldn't add their own? It is referring to our broadcast stations. Now the reason that's significant is because it's saying some of the broadcasts that we're seeing may not be our own. I'll get into a minute why and which ones, but just for now know that everything is not as it seems. Up next, we have what is undoubtedly the most frightening broadcast in the entire series, Real Sleep. We see that the only possible timestamp is 3 p.m., so therefore that is what we're watching. And we're shown a program from the Thought Research Institute. Now the beginning, aside from the very creepy background music, it seems to be a standard fair educational television series, but as you've probably guessed at this point, that doesn't last long. It opens with a myth versus facts section, which essentially explains that dreams are stupid and we shouldn't have them, and they are the effects of a primitive mind. This is very odd as it then leads into something called the Kleitman map, which is basically just baloney science saying that dreams cause restless sleep and therefore we shouldn't dream. And after that, we get into the section called Introducing Your Anti-Dream, which uh, I'll just uh, play the first part for you. It then does something similar with stage two, and then into stage three, it asks you to repeat this phrase to yourself. There are no faces. There are no faces. Before a series of subliminal messages are thrown on screen. Now, what's absolutely terrifying about these kind of messages is you can't read them aloud or process them vocally, but you can read them and retain them in your brain. And then boom, good night, like it never happened. Now, just a warning if you're planning on watching Real Sleep. It's an absolutely excellent horror short, and I highly recommend it if you like scary stuff, but as someone who followed the steps mentioned in it, I did have nightmares. Uh, this is an actual psychological test that's proven to mess with your function and cognition with other people's faces. Uh, it is the real deal, and it is pretty freaky. Bombings go for it. I'm fine for the most part, but just practice caution. A lot of this is really mess with your head type stuff. Excellent horror, but like I said, be careful. And then the broadcast ends with the message, do not see a doctor. Fantastic. After this, we get into our at this time final broadcast and most important for understanding what's going on. And that is called sky watching. Again, with our beginning timestamps, we see that sky watching is taking place at midnight, followed by a city council meeting and paid programming. Normally here we'd be in the paid programming time slot, but since this one is called sky watching and there's a timestamp for sky watching, I'm going to say we're watching sky watching. At first, while the style does transition to amateur, if not a little bit creepy, it seems to be going normal with the videographer showing Orion's belt and plates as random constellations in the sky. However, this immediately changes when he cuts to the moon. And remember, the moon's kind of a big deal in this series. As he cuts to it, the editor titles it his throne. And as he gets up close on the moon, we see something very, very wrong. It's as if the surface of it has become these fleshy tendrils and all of the dust on the surface is being drawn into craters as if the moon itself is breathing or something inside of it is. The camera then pans over and we see a very odd structure. It seems to be several circles or buildings put together 
that can be seen from Earth that lead to a giant triangle formation in a crater of the moon. Seeing this, the camera pans backwards, we hear an alarm, and then all of a sudden, the moon becomes giant with this diseased side popping out of it and horrible noises being launched as the cameraman walks around the camera, bows down in front of it, and it simply says, rejoice. And that is the ending of sky watching. And coincidentally, that's the ending at this point for Local 58. So you may be asking yourself, what does it mean? What's going on? What did I just watch? What were those faces? So let's get into it. Now, I also wanna go ahead and dispel this point. Everyone, and I mean everyone who's made videos on this series, simply chalks it up to aliens. Everything that happened was aliens, the monster scene were aliens, yada, yada, yada. Not only do I think that's incredibly cheap and boring, but I also do not think it is the case. This has gotten to the point where the author himself makes jokes about it on Twitter. What I do think it is, is the moon itself. Those familiar with the works of H.P. Lovecraft will have heard the ideas of something called an eldritch horror, or eldritch horror. This is essentially just a being that defies the understandings of human logic or the understandings of scope of what a creature can be. Also, I really hate applying one work of art to another work of art, but if I had to compare what I think this creature is to something else, it would be comparable to the brother moons in Dead Space 3. And the reason I say that is because I believe the moon in Local 58 is a living, breathing creature that is affecting the actions of things happening on Earth. Or, at the very least, something inside of the moon is a living, breathing creature affecting things on Earth. One of the reasons I think it may be a giant beast inside of the moon rather than the moon itself is that whenever the moon is viewed in sky watching, the videographer refers to it as his throne instead of just, you know, him. Given this, I think that the moon may be a sort of egg, or at least encasement for whatever is inside of it. The chain of events go something like this. Whenever the US landed on the moon at the end of the space race, those that like to dig a little deeper will know that there was 11 minutes of missed time where NASA maintained contact with the crew of Apollo 11, but their transmissions were not made known to the public. There is a lot of theories of what happened in those 11 minutes but going by Local 58s, I think that they discovered that there was something inside the moon. Again, everything I'm talking is for the ARG and the story. Please do not fill my DMs with, oh, you think there's a giant monster in the moon? This, let me have fun, please. Whatever happened on the Apollo 11 mission certainly angered the creature inside of the moon as it began sending messages back to Earth. Those messages were picked up through radio waves as mentioned in a look back talking about sending messages into their domain, and it makes sense for them to send their own messages back. This continues until the creature inside of the moon breaks out and has a psychological effect on the people of Earth. So keeping this whole theory in mind, let's go through each of the individual broadcasts and see how it ties into the bigger picture. Chronologically, we start with, you are on the fastest available route. I don't know exactly what to call this creature besides Eldritch Horror or the Lovecraftian Beast, so for now I'm just going to refer to it as the moon, but just know it can mean the thing in the moon or whatever. The moon is interacting with signals on Earth, which is what's giving the GPS such a weird direction list for the driver to follow. We know that the moon can influence electronics on Earth as seen by later broadcasts, so saying that it would change the rules on a GPS isn't that far out of the realm of possibility. Not only that, but if it's to be believed that the moon is affecting the psychology of people on Earth, then the driver getting there, hearing these noises, and running away frantically before crashing all makes sense. Next we have contingency, which admittedly is a tricky one. The two prevailing theories are that it is a legitimate emergency put out by the United States, or that it's just a hoax altogether. In my opinion, this is another one of the moon's psychological tricks. If the moon was erupting with a giant Lovecraftian beast to destroy Earth, that would be readily apparent to everyone on Earth. It would make sense to people in the world that their nations would send them a broadcast, essentially surrendering or giving up to this gargantuan creature. 
However, I think that this is another one of the moon's tricks. It is trying to convince people to commit suicide, but not only that, killing their children and animals in mass as a way to further cause disruption on Earth. This leads into the moon's motives. Is it trying to wipe everyone out? Is it trying to get people to worship it? And I think it's a bit of both. If it can promote hysteria and cause this mass suicide and panic, then people become more reliant on whatever forces that are there. And since it's the only force there, it becomes a god to the people. Again, I don't want to make direct comparisons, but it's pretty similar to Dead Space. Remember earlier when I said that the broadcast ended with the 51st state is not a place? There was a period of time after the American moon landing where the moon itself was referred to as the 51st state. I think when given the context that the moon itself is a living, breathing creature, the phrase, the 51st state is not a place, takes a considerable bit of meaning. It's not a place, it's an it. It's a thing, it's a creature. And again, this is another reason of why I love this kind of horror so much. It leads to these personal revelations that put everything in a new perspective. That simply phrasing it is not a place makes everything tie together. And not only that, but it is absolutely rewarding to figure it out. After that, we get into Weather Surface, which is our next direct reference to the moon in the series. It says there's a meteorological event, which yes, we've established. The moon is alive. Oh no, everyone go hide. However, as I said before, the moon can influence broadcast networks on Earth. So immediately we see this warning change to a coaxing to go outside and look at it. Perhaps looking at the moon or seeing what's going on will either break the psyche of the individual or compel it to worship and just lose its sense of self. Whatever's going on, we can see this fight ensue, as mentioned earlier, where the broadcast station is saying do not go outside and the moon is saying go outside and look at it. In this final phrase, I believe that the moon itself got to the broadcasters, which explains some of the broadcast we see that come after it. Again, I'll read the quote that the broadcast station says. It's in the light. The moon came in. He found me. Through the mirror. Moonlight white. White like eyes. Not light, but blood. I drown in him. If you are afraid, we will look together. I also think that this last phrase, if you are afraid, we will look together, validates what happens in sky watching. And remember earlier how I said it's not people screaming, it's something else? I think this is the moon screaming. The footage we see at the end of weather service is right before the either hatching or breaking out of the rock for the creature within the moon, which not only ties weather service to sky watching, but it establishes the power of whatever this beast is. After that, we have station ID, which again establishes that there's a megahertz symbol, which means that whatever broadcast we put out can be picked up and transmitted on. And it also says to look away, again, referring to the moon, and that there are safety and numbers. This is absolutely referring to the moon itself to find groups to try to get away. But given the scale of this event, I highly doubt that that will stop anything. Next, we have show for children. I think that this is once again another one of the moon's ploys, specifically a ploy targeted to kids themselves. We see the moon dreadfully watching our main character as he goes and finds a body which scares him. Now here's what's really interesting. I didn't pick up on this until like my third watch through of Local 58, but tell me if I'm crazy here. It seems like the creature that Cadaver comes across in the second grave, this thing, looks a whole lot like this thing. I think this may be our one clear glimpse of whatever this thing in the moon is. Obviously scaled down, but this amalgamation of flesh and bone and this awful noises. I could be absolutely crazy. Let me know if I'm crazy, but I think I'm on something with that one because otherwise that thing on the grave makes absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> it then ends with Cadaver dreadfully waiting for the moon to pass over, and when it does, Cadaver is killed. Also, we see the corner of the eye of the moon, which may lead some to believe the moon is alive, I believe is to say the moon is watching. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, if the moon is wanting people to die and worship it, then what good is there in promoting fear? And I think it's because children are very responsive to fear as an authority. Like, think about it this way. If you want a kid to worship you as a deity, 
you're not going to approach it with those ideas of safety and comfort because kids don't understand that. But fear, they will absolutely give into. It's the same reason children are punished with spanking and things such as, because it is the fear of punishment if they do wrong. So if a child is shown a cartoon character killed by the moon, that immediately establishes a fear and authority in the moon. It's just another strategy to lead to this creature's takeover. In a look back, as mentioned before, it talks about sending signals to their domain and how they can send signals back. Now, real sleep is very interesting given this whole idea of the moon, and I think that it deals much more with the psychological effect of people on Earth. Very obviously, the information in real sleep doesn't make sense. It's talking about dreams being unnecessary and how we don't need complex thought. Remember earlier how I mentioned that real sleep is an actual psychological experiment? Well, here's that psychological experiment in action. If you don't want to participate, skip ahead about 20 seconds. The purpose of this experiment is to disassociate you with real human faces and make them harder to understand or comprehend. So you may be asking, well, what does this accomplish for the moon? It accomplishes the same thing for adults that show for children accomplished for kids. It not only creates a paranoia, but it creates this dissonance among people. This idea that if the moon can broadcast into people's houses programs that make them lose their connection with reality and other people, their psyche will be much more fragile and will either be overtaken by suicide messages like in contingency or worship messages like what we see in sky watching. The idea of things like there are no faces as well as the incredibly straightforward hints seen with the subliminal messages in the fourth stage, it's very clear that this is another one of the moon's ploys or the creature within the moon to break down the human spirit. And finally, that leads us to sky watching. So at this point, we know that the local 58 programmers have succumbed to the moon's wrath, essentially, to the point that they are filming the moon and calling it things like his throne. We see on the surface these long, fleshy tendrils, and this is kind of what makes me lean towards the idea of it as an egg that's burst open later. And then these obviously built structures on the moon, such as the pyramid and buildings, establish that there is something happening on the surface. Then once the moon seemingly explodes and whatever this is breaks out of the bottom of it, the screen says rejoice as the videographer bows down and begins to worship it, showing that the moon has essentially won. I think that Local 58 is an excellent example of stringent uh, augmented reality horror done right. I think anyone who likes non-linear storytelling should give it a look. Even if you're not a big fan of horror, you can just skip through the face part. It is very interesting and worth analyzing. Also, it seems from cryptic hints given by the Twitter that there will be more later. So if there is, I may make a video about it. If people enjoy this one, we'll just have to see. Or if the next video is like, oh, it was definitely aliens or oh, well, Wendigoon was wrong about absolutely everything, and then I'll be sad. But above all else, I encourage you to go watch it for yourself. Come back, let me know if you think I'm wrong on something, or if you concur, or if you have your own theory about what happened, because I would absolutely love to hear it. Uh, I want more people to get pointed towards this and more discussions to start with this, because when I see good stories, I want them to have done justice. But once again, thank you all. Thank you so much for the support. I will be seeing you all later. I'll have more spooky videos for the month, but uh, really above all else, thank you all for watching. It really does mean a lot. And peace out. Bye.